let me start with, and I want to quote your novel. Oh, no. Oh, okay. oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good... <laughs> Please, that has nothing to do with it. <laughs> well, you know what? Because I, I think it might. I, and here it is. This is from The Deep Wetzes. And the main character says, think of it as anthropology. Think of it as a window into another world. Can't that apply to the outsiders? It sure can. He's got you there. Yeah. No, you're right. Yeah. That is what it is. I mean, we. it's another world that we created. Um, it's it's a you know it's a it's a made up anthropology, mm -hmm. um, and that was kind of the inspiration for it, was to make up a world and then and then like really focus in on all the little details of that made up world. There is some excellent writing in this premiere episode, and I can't wait to see the the, the following episodes and wait to see it get picked up. There it is to a degree surreal, yet you can really connect to it, and it it, may, it reminded me of work of Bray Bad Ray Bradbury. Uh, Stephen King, Lord of the Rings. It can be surreal, yet it's socially relevant. What is the spine of the story of, of Outsiders? What does it tell us about the way we are today? Well, there's a lot of different things. You know, this, I think the spine that we're following is there's this family that's been on the top of that mountain for 200 plus years, and they're being threatened by the outside. And what, what ultimately will do, the, do them in? Will it be this outside threat, or will it be threats from their own family? So we're following that, but then there are such big things about about uh, nature and about technology, about money, about about capitalism. There's a lot. It's typical lefty commie Hollywood fare. Is pretty much what we're what we're making, what we're selling here. Exactly. The sheriff way to me is almost like a, a working class voice of reason, where there's like a faction of corporate greed in there, and he's saying, look, they have been on that mountain with no money no microwave, no convenience store, yet they've managed to, to survive and remain a family. Is he like a voice of reason, Sheriff Wade? Yeah, I mean, I think that he's, you know, between a rock and a hard place. Uh -huh. and, I, and on the one hand, he has a job to do. Um, the Farrells don't own the land that they live on. Uh, it's owned by this energy company that wants to, you know, mine it so that we can all have lights for our televisions, um, and that's so people in that region can have jobs. And on the other hand, he knows that uh, they're kind of a dangerous bunch, and you don't really want to mess with them. It, they tried before, and it didn't go well, and he's the last person on Earth that wants to get involved in that. So, yeah, that's that's the story we'll follow for his character over the season. Now, Mr. Tolan, you were part of the production team for Murphy Brown. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're going to his novel and me, Murphy yeah. Brown. What the hell, Larry? What the I, look, I want to talk about your report card from nursery school, okay? okay. I'm going to go all yeah, the way I was going to say, you've spent too much time on the internet. I'm going to get you. It's not just Murphy the internet. Murphy Brown. I remember the old days of TV when they were big boxes. Sure. Okay, so my point is you were, you were dealing with one of the senior three networks. That was yes, on CBS. Yes, yes. Could you at that time have gotten a green light to do a project like Outsiders the way you wanted to? No. And forget about then. How about now? No. It could not happen. It would not happen now. This really is the, the product of, uh, there are two things at work here. WGN America is really, I, I think, trying to branch out. They're really trying to establish, you know, they only have a couple of shows. Mm -hmm. So they're obviously looking to establish themselves with more product. So there's one thing. And the second thing is we're living in this time where there's so many things to choose from that you gotta start taking big swings like this to cut through the clutter of, of what's, what's available. And I think this show does it. I think it's so different that, that, that it's going to have that impact. Do you agree? No. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> yes, of course I agree. Of course. <laughs> Is this is this your one of your first forays into TV or I've done I've written some projects before but this is the first thing that I've ever done that is making the air yeah and with the experience that you've had so far would you do other projects have it, has it uh, inspired you to to move further into TV uh, well I can't even think about that right now because we're in the just in the thick of this thing um, but if I do another pr project on TV, it's just going to be like three characters in a hotel room <laughs> trying to get out you know, and just I, talking, I, saying I, funny things. I, I don't know how I ended up on this show because after Rescue Me, shooting in New York, outside, cold, hot, in fire, smoke, and everything, like that, I said, my next show is going to be about an agoraphobic Park Avenue family. Yeah. <laughs> They just, the lovely apartment, tall ceiling, they never leave. That's it. Now I'm in Pittsburgh. How did that happen? <laughs>